Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Melania goes full grizzly wife on coward who attacked her husband. She's in rare form. The Daily Caller is reporting that our first lady Melania Trump heavily criticized the author of an anonymous New York Times op-ed which was critical of President Trump on Thursday and even went as far as to accuse them of sabotaging the country. If a person is bold enough to accuse people of negative actions, they have a responsibility to publicly stand by their words and people have the right to be able to defend themselves, Melania Trump said in a statement. To the writer of the op-ed, you are not protecting this country, you are sabotaging it with your cowardly actions, she said in a Thursday statement provided to CNN. She preceded her declaration on the op-ed with a lengthy condemnation of anonymous sources generally. Unidentified sources have become the majority of the voices people hear about in today's news. People with no names are writing our nation's history. If a person is bold enough to accuse people of negative actions, they have a responsibility to publicly stand by their words and people have a right to defend themselves, she explained. This is the NY Times opinion piece in question. President Trump is facing a test to his presidency unlike any faced by a modern American leader. It's not just that the special counsel looms large or that the country is bitterly divided over Mr. Trump's leadership, or even that his party might well lose the House to an opposition hell-bent on his downfall. The dilemma, which he does not fully grasp, is that many of the senior officials in his own administration are working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. I would know. I am one of them. To be clear, ours is not the popular resistance of the left. We want the administration to succeed and think that many of its policies have already made America safer and more prosperous. But we believe our first duty is to this country, and the president continues to act in a manner that is detrimental to the health of our republic. That is why many Trump appointees have vowed to do what we can to preserve our democratic institutions while thwarting Mr. Trump's more misguided impulses until he is out of office. The root of the problem is the president's amorality. Anyone who works with him knows he is not moored to any discernible first principles that guide his decision-making. Although he was elected as a Republican, the president shows little affinity for ideals long espoused by conservatives, free minds, free markets and free people. At best, he has invoked these ideals in scripted settings. At worst, he has attacked them outright. How McCain got the last word against Trump In addition to his mass marketing of the notion that the press is the enemy of the people, President Trump's impulses are generally anti-trade and anti-democratic. Don't get me wrong. There are bright spots that the near-ceaseless negative coverage of the administration fails to capture, effective deregulation, historic tax reform, a more robust military and more. But these successes have come to spite, not because of, the president's leadership style, which is impetuous, adversarial, petty and ineffective. From the White House to executive branch departments and agencies, senior officials will privately admit their daily disbelief at the commander-in-chief's comments and actions. Most are working to insulate their operations from his whims. Meetings with him veer off-topic and off the rails, he engages in repetitive rants, and his impulsiveness results in half-baked, ill-informed and occasionally reckless decisions that have to be walked back. There is literally no telling whether he might change his mind from one minute to the next. A top official complained to me recently, exasperated by an Oval Office meeting at which the president flip-flopped on a major policy decision he'd made only a week earlier. The erratic behavior would be more concerning if it weren't for unsung heroes in and around the White House. Some of his aides have been cast as villains by the media. But in private, they have gone to great lengths to keep bad decisions contained to the West Wing, though they are clearly not always successful. It may be cold comfort in this chaotic era. But Americans should know that there are adults in the room. We fully recognize what is happening. And we are trying to do what's right even when Donald Trump won't. The result is a two-track presidency. Take foreign policy, in public and in private, President Trump shows a preference for autocrats and dictators, such as President Vladimir Putin of Russia and North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un, and displays little genuine appreciation for the ties that bind us to allied, like-minded nations. Astute observers have noted, though, that the rest of the administration is operating on another track, one where countries like Russia are called out for meddling and punished accordingly, and where allies around the world are engaged as peers rather than ridiculed as rivals. On Russia, for instance, the president was reluctant to expel so many of Mr. Putin's spies as punishment for the poisoning of a former Russian spy in Britain. He complained for weeks about senior staff members letting him get boxed into further confrontation with Russia 
and he expressed frustration that the United States continued to impose sanctions on the country for its malign behavior. But his national security team knew better, such actions had to be taken, to hold Moscow accountable. This isn't the work of the so-called deep state. It's the work of the steady state. Given the instability many witnessed, there were early whispers within the cabinet of invoking the 25th Amendment, which would start a complex process for removing the president. But no one wanted to precipitate a constitutional crisis. So we will do what we can to steer the administration in the right direction until, one way or another, it's over. The bigger concern is not what Mr. Trump has done to the presidency but rather what we as a nation have allowed him to do to us. We have sunk low with him and allowed our discourse to be stripped of civility. Senator John McCain put it best in his farewell letter. All Americans should heed his words and break free of the tribalism trap, with the high aim of uniting through our shared values and love of this great nation. Although there has been a lot of speculation as to who this mystery writer is the article was said to have been written by a self-described senior administration official who writes, and in a foolish way is trying to say that although Trump is supposedly not doing the right thing that they the American people should know that there are many adults in the room who are doing the right thing. This mystery writer described themselves as a cabal of administration officials actively circumventing the president's daily desires. The op-ed comes just as excerpts from Bob Woodward's new book on the administration are being released, which show a similar culture of senior aides who do not think highly of the president and work constantly to control his behavior. The swamp strikes back, but now Melania is unleashed. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.